to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Talk about the super Swedes. We've had ABBA for coffee break and now Roxette, listen to your heart. Well, one man who listens to his heart, he just jaunted off for a few days out bush, going to check out uh, some beautiful places like Bungendore and Braidwood, actually down near Canberra, aren't they? That was good. It was three days away and I really, really, really enjoyed it. A big warm welcome to Professor Tim Roberts, Director of the University of Newcastle's Tom Farrell Institute, here for us to talk about the environment and our environment. And today we're focusing on landscape rehydration. Yeah, that's it. It's the business of Peter Andrews. It's been talked about on television a lot and he's been pushing it for the last 40 years or more. Mm. And that is to get the plants to do the work in the uh, in the soil to produce better soil and therefore better agriculture. And what I did last week was I went down to Canberra and I had a look at three farms that had field days and there were hundreds of people who came along on the Saturday, a different one Sunday, a different one Monday, and all of them were looking at how the creeks had been redeveloped. Now, you and I know that when we drive around Australia, we see these eroded creeks that are sitting in, in the fields and it might be 10, 20, 30 foot deep. And uh, uh, that's, I thought, how farming was and how farms were. But in fact, that's the result of too much clearing, therefore too much fast water rushing through the paddock and digging away at the uh, creek bed until eventually we've got this great canyon and... What happens really is that the water that flows from the rainstorm just goes straight out to sea and within a day, two days, the land is as dry as ever. And so the Peter Andrews technique that's been applied there is to work on these eroded creek beds and to slow the flow of water which is usually done by keeping the willows that were planted so many decades ago to try and do this. Even though they're noxious weeds, Peter isn't precious about um, them, is he? He's like, well, they can stay because they're holding that bank intact. Absolutely, and that's Uh. something that we need to get across to everybody, that if you... Uh, wish to just go into one of these creeks, which is already eroded, and you take away the main uh, uh, biological way of slowing the water flow, then you have a rainstorm and suddenly you've lost another 100 tonnes of soil down through the stream and into, well, in this case, into Newcastle Harbour if it's around here. So it's better to have a willow than nothing. In my view, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so these people have been building leaky weirs. They've been planting thousands of shrubs and trees and reeds and rushes. They've been fencing off the riverbanks from the cattle because it's the hard hooves of the cattle and the sheep and the animals that continue the damage along uh, the riverbed and stop whatever might have accumulated there to slow the flow. What sort of trees are they planting, Tim? Well, everything um, from native to deciduous trees uh, from overseas. And indeed, uh, Peter Andrews makes a very good point that some trees are really, really good for soil and some aren't so good for soil. So if you've got a deciduous tree, it's continually dropping its its carriage of leaves into the ground and these are then used for all of the insects, all of the uh, invertebrates and eventually adding the nutrient back into the soil. And you might say, well... Eucalypts do the same. They drop leaves because around here at present, the eucalypts are dropping huge numbers. Over a slower continuum. But the cunning thing that the eucalypt has done over millions of years is it's developed toxins that stop other plants from growing. And these toxins are, are really very, very difficult for other plants to deal with. And so um, it's, it's a way of keeping the land to themselves. But, of course, if you've got denuded land and you want to, get, you want to reinvigorate the soil and so on, then you need to plant trees, and, and these can be the the uh, the native she oaks. These can be all sorts of trees, but eucalypts is probably not high on the list of the ones you want to plant. Ah, interesting. So, uh, what I saw down there were three vibrant river valleys that had been um, rejuvenated. Uh, one of the 
farms at uh, Maloon Creek, they were claiming a 60% increase in carrying capacity on the floodplain. So they 60% more cattle were being able to grow and, uh, and sold from these floodplains. They had also done measurements of water coming in at the top of the farm, mm. going through the, the uh, chains of ponds and out the bottom of the farm, and they had measurements using uh, water meters to show more water was actually leaving the farm than was coming in. And so uh, not only are you getting a river valley, a creek valley, which remains green in, in uh, dry times, you can see this from the satellite at Peter... Andrew's place at Towan Park out there at, in the Bylong Valley, you can see uh, when the satellite picture is taken uh, during a dry time, there's these brown farms all around and his is green mm. because it's retained the water in the floodplain. All very exciting. I had a great trip. I'd recommend it to anybody to go down there and see what I think is the way to bring productivity back to our farmlands. Professor Tim Roberts, it's always interesting to talk to you. And that, what you've just described there, does fly in the face of people that have got a creek or a water source running through a property thinking, oh, well, we'll just pump out of it and irrigate. The more you can disperse that water across your property and create a floodplain to re moisten to provide nutrients back into the soil, the better they can be and the more productive they are. As always, incredibly interesting. What are we doing next week? I thought we'd have a look at the Hunter Wetlands Centre over there at Shortland oh. because they, with with a panel that I actually bought, have moved to solar power. And it, it's part of the it's part of the community working with the organization to change to renewable energy. So that's our plan for next week, Hunter Hut Wetland Centre. It's an excellent plan as well. Professor Tim Roberts, Director of the Tom Farrell Institute.